how do you walk that line between person of interest and staying humble? Well, I think people, I think people of interest are confident. That's one of the characteristics. There's eight characteristics of people of interest. And since you asked, I'll go through those. Um, people of interest have ingredients. Okay. Meaning when you come, I don't cook very well, but my wife's a great cook. And I asked her one day, if, if you miss just one ingredient, will it mess up the whole dish? And she's like, absolutely. Like you can't miss one ingredient, right? Well, people of interest are kind of the same way is they have ingredients. Okay. So they have knowledge, but I'm going to add a, a, a descriptive to that specific knowledge, mm. niche knowledge. They're not generalist. They're specialist. There's a reason the heart surgeon makes more money than a general practitioner. There's a reason people that have a niche expert earn more income than general general people. Okay, so people of interest have very specific niches. They got very specific knowledge. Okay, my knowledge is in how to activate the prey drive in a person or in a team. That's what I spent my whole life doing. It's a very specific knowledge about how to activate a drive in people. Okay. They also have skill, but they don't just have general skill. They have impeccable skills. Now, Cody's had the privilege of spending time with some of the biggest people in the world in the self-development space. And I guarantee you when he's around them, he's figured this out. The, the dudes are at the top of their game are good. And when I say good, they're not kind of good. They're not, they're not average. They're not, they don't have subpar skills. They have incredible skills. Some of them are selling machines. Some of them are great at making you feel like a million bucks. Some of them are incredible communicators. Some of them are incredible motivators or activators, but he's been around some of these people to see that they are not just average cats. <clears throat> Their skill set has been refined over long cycles of time. When you're in their presence, it's like, dang, that dude's good, right? Yeah. Like you've seen people in different settings, well, like you've been with me in different settings, yeah. On that note, right, on that note, I, I attribute, well, you know, we, we, we've been going through this virus, I attribute the last two months, two, two and a half, three months of production and focus, every company we have has doubled. And if I look back, um, January and February, you and I spent a lot of time together. I also went to 10X and, 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 and got to hang out with Grant Cardone and his team a little bit, right? Like you said, and Nate Offert's event. People like Nate will get you freaking jacked up, right? Yeah. We, we were on a, you and I spoke at a couple of events together. We were on a cruise together. We rode from Miami to, to Vero together. Um, it was literally, oh, we were at the lodge together. Like it was literally, we were at North Star's event together. Like literally for like two weeks, we saw each other probably 10 days. You yeah. know, and you're pro eventually you're like, this dude, is he stalking me or is he, you know, or is he just this serious, man? What's going on? But to your point, well, totally. Yeah, the, the point is you, got, you, you get to see people in different settings and you get to see their skills. How do they communicate with different people? How do they win over an audience? How do they connect? How do they tell stories? How do they like when you see big time people do their thing, man, their skills are so powerful. Uh, to, 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 to your point and, and, and to um, recognize your skill and talent, when we were on that drive, Lakin was driving. We were going from Miami to Vero Beach to go to SLS. And I remember you're, you're freaking, dude, you're talking to, you're talking to customers. You're, you're, you're making sales calls, you know, like your activity was so high during that time. And in my office, my activities, extremely high and I get a ton done but when I'm on the road it's not as high as it needs to be and 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 looking at that I'm like all right he's making me look bad it's time to step up my game I can't let coach out do me yeah well I don't think that you know to this point I don't think money buys you freedom I think skills buys you freedom yeah the stronger your skill is for every person that's on here watching this today your income is in direct proportion to how good your skill is Okay, and the stronger your skill is, you're not selling insurance, you're selling a set of beliefs. You're selling a connection. You're selling, I'm a must have in your life versus a nice to have. You're selling the ability to network with people. So people of interest have, right, specific knowledge. They have impeccable skill. They have very high desire or prey drive. What we talk about a lot, it's a new book I'm writing called Flip the Switch. 
uh, I've never met a lazy person of interest. Okay. Now, I, Brad Lee and I debate this because Brad Lee said that he's lazy and he's a person of interest. But I said, man, I see you get up at four o'clock in the morning. I see you work all day on Saturday. I see you at your office on Sunday. I see you doing it. But like, like you may think you're lazy, but you ain't lazy. I have never personally met a lazy person of interest. It takes high levels of desire to become a person of interest. You have to go to things you don't want to go to, do things you don't want to do, show up at things, network, uh, like, like, like it's work. Okay. I think I told you I spent two days with, with Chuck McDowell down in Florida because his house is close to my house. I didn't plan on that. I plan on going down there, Cody, and hanging out by myself and, and just doing my own thing for two or three days. And, and, and these turned into three or four or five or six hour networking events with he and I. Like, like right? What, because when, he, when, when a guy running a $100 million company calls, you, you, you don't say, no, I don't want to come over. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 it's inconvenient to be a person of interest is what I'm trying to tell you. Success is inconvenient. Okay, so people of interest have a high desire. They want to be known. They want to become renowned. They want to be celebrated. They want to. They want to matter. They yes. want to do something big in the world, man. Legendary. Yes. Like I'm tired of playing small. They also have, to your question of your gentleman that asked the question, they have a contagious confidence. Mm. Now there is a difference between confidence and arrogance. Uh, I would consider you very humble. I would consider me very humble. Uh, I'm going to use another word, authentic. Mm. Uh, I believe I can learn anything from anybody, anywhere, anytime. I don't care how much money they make. I don't care where they're from. I don't care what their background is. I learn things from my seven-year-old daughter. I, 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 le I learn things from people that earn less money than me. I earn things from people that earn more money than me. So I think it comes through when you, the crossover is when you become arrogant. Arrogant is when your self-appraisal is much greater than your market value. Yeah. You, 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 your, your market value is here, but you think you're here. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. We have all over appraised ourselves before. I have. I've over appraised my skill set. We all have. We all, that's, a ten, that's a human nature thing. We tend to overvalue how important we are. Yeah. Okay. And if you study the laws of human nature, which I have extensively with Robert Greene, it, it, we, we, we all, if, but if we don't believe in ourselves, who else is going to believe in us? Right. So there's a line between being really confident and being arrogant. Arrogant is a turnoff. Arrogant is when you talk about yourself. Arrogant is when arrogant is when you are you are internally focused on you. That's arrogance. Okay. Confidence is where I have an internal knowing I can create this. I can manifest. And that confidence is attractive. So remember, yeah. people of interest attract people to them. Okay. Think of them as people of advancement. They leave you with the impression of increase. OK, when you're around big time people, Cody, you think bigger. Yes. Right. You got, you got the vision of doing eight percent, which I'm going to be speaking at on this concept. I'm going to be breaking this concept deeper at eight uh, percent. you got this concept by going to 10x. You sat on the front row. That's where I met you and your wife. You know, I mean, it, you, you, so so what happened is you're there going, I can play bigger. I can mm. think bigger. Right. It gave you a shot of confidence. So you came home and you changed, man. So yeah. people have been have knowledge, skill, desire, confidence. Okay, those are four key ingredients of all people of interest. And if you're watching this, you may be saying, man, I'm struggling in this area, I'm struggling in that area, which is why you need a coach in your life. A coach will quickly diagnose where your missing structure is. Absolutely. But people, people of interest also have likability, which is energy, right? That's why I smile a lot, I'm upbeat, I'm positive, I'm intense, but I'm positive. Because I understood the power of attitude, having a good attitude, having a good attitude toward other people, being friendly, being being inviting. I, I guarantee you probably have speakers at your conference that that were rude to people, mean to people. You're like, man, that that dude or that woman, we ain't never having them back because they got a bad attitude. Right. So so my point, my point to you is, we got knowledge, we got skill, we got desire, we got confidence, we got likability. Another word for likability is energy. You got good energy, man. You're open. You're invited. You also have connectivity. When I wrote the book, it wasn't focused on internet connectivity, although it was focused on you can connect to anybody, anywhere, anytime. Okay, I can connect a person in Springfield, Missouri, or I can connect to a person in New York City. I can connect to farmers or I can connect to millionaires. That's connectivity. But in today's world, it's, it's and Hank Norman said this to me, being famous today 
It's not about being in the movies. It's about how many people feel connected to you. Okay? How many people feel connected to you? It's coming to flood here now. I don't know if you hear that. <laughs> I, I, I okay, good. It. Coming a big rain. It's sitting down on the roof here. Now, coming down. So, so here's my point. And I thought that's a that's a great person of interest concept. Cody Askin doesn't have to be in the movies today to be famous. You don't have to have a TV show to be famous. I could feel connected to you on Instagram, Cody. I can watch you on YouTube and, and, and you can become famous. I can follow up with you and you can become famous. You understand what I'm saying? So connectivity in today's world is how do people connect to you? How do they feel connected to you? And then they've got deep networks and finally what I would call a free prize. Deep networks is people that earn small incomes have small networks of people. People of interest have got deep networks. So you've seen me build relationships with guys like Tim Grover, Tim Story, you know, big time people, Kevin Elko, uh, Cardone. You've seen me build relationships with, with some of the biggest names in the world. And that's because that raises your person of interest score. You follow what I'm saying? Who you run with raises your person of interest score. And then finally, they've got a free prize and a free prize is some something that's unique about you. Something that I can't get with anybody else. Like out of all the insurance people out there, there's something that you have that I just don't think I can get anywhere. Like my real estate agent is a good example. He he helps me buy and sell real estate. He also gives me his emotional support. He also is a tremendous advocate for me. So he signs up all kinds of people for my coaching program. He fights for me. He makes sales calls for me. He's my real estate agent. But that's valuable for me. So so. That's a free prize to me. I don't just get the real estate. I get I get the extra. And that's what you guys got to be thinking. Like, what do people get with me that's extra? So those are the ingredients of people of interest. Mm. Well, one of the things you mentioned a second ago, too, with desire is, uh, or you mentioned in the past, and it came to mind, um, was how someone that wants to do something big in the world, that they, they wake up hungry like they haven't ever accomplished anything before. Like, in, in, in your example, extremely well-known, very large company, spoke at 10X, right? Amazing team, like a lot of uh, a lot of really good things going for, for you from all angles. But you probably still wake up thinking, gosh, I know I can do so much more, you know? And I used to worry, and I know a lot of people listening to this right now are probably thinking the same thing. I used to think that I would wake up and, and I'd be like, wow, what have I done, you know? Hey, you love this video and you want some brain food? I got five books that every new insurance agent should read. Go watch that, grab the books, see you over there. When you read a book, when you go to an event, when you listen to a book, when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university,